Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Sockbot and today I want to talk about exploration and map making and more specifically whether or not a game that you are playing or creating should or should not have a map because it's pretty darn important to creating any sense of exploration which is literally the basis for any type of adventure game that you may want to create and honestly these days I think pretty much every game that's longer than a few hours and that's not a puzzle game, a fighting game, or a shooter is generally an adventure game. It's a pretty broad topic but by exploration I want to define that a little bit because it is a little bit of a vague term. Exploration is the sense of excitement that you get when you're traveling between new or previously explored areas and finding new things. And that sense of excitement that you get over the impending find of all of these really cool treasures or new areas, which uh, is kind of enhanced by the art team and any sort of game designer that may be working on the game, that excitement is a sense of exploration. Of course, this is my opinion. I did not Google the definition of it, but I'm sure our lovely editor, being me, will emplace that right here. So if you enjoy this sort of deep dive into a very specific topic, which is kind of what we do here, feel free to leave a like down below and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more like this. But without further ado, I want to talk a little bit about exploration by giving some examples. A lot of different games encourage exploration by creating new areas and by making their game less linear than you would normally expect. By leaving little areas off to the side that often contain power-ups or extra items, you're encouraging a player to explore a level as opposed to just get through the level. Now, in many cases, there's nothing wrong with a linear game. There's not a whole lot of issues with creating something like a Last of Us for example, that really does go from beginning to end and doesn't have a whole lot of exploration to do. That being said, there are side things in The Last of Us. There's different things to collect, and at the very least, in the Call of Duty games, there's ammo to collect off the beaten path. Now, this isn't something that I want to talk about with those games because they don't do a great job of it, not because they're bad games, just because they don't focus on it. Instead, one of the best examples that I can give has to do with the Metroid and the Castlevania games. So, as of recent, and I know I'm very very late on this, I've been playing a lot of Metroid Prime. I tried this as a child and I really could not get through it, or I guess as a teenager, because it encouraged exploration almost to a fault where there was so much to explore that I felt it lacked direction back then, and being that I do have pretty bad ADD, and that is not me saying that as an excuse, that is, that is a diagnosis by the way, don't use ADD to describe yourself getting distracted by things, that's not cool, bro. But regardless, this game to me was just not something I was interested in. Fast forward a few years, and in the past, I would say seven or eight years, oh gosh, it's been a while, I've been getting really into Metroidvania games. And again, that whole Metroid-Castlevania combination is a huge centerpiece for exploration in video games, and something that you can look at pretty much any game in either series and find great examples of this exploration. They leave all of these different power-ups just off the beaten path, to encourage you to explore every nook and cranny of a new zone and to get really excited for when you get to the next zone because there will be inevitably far more power-ups on every single corner that you can possibly find. Now, almost all of the games in the Metroid and Castlevania series have maps these days. I say these days because the initial Metroid and the early games in the Castlevania series, they had tiny little maps, but I wouldn't really qualify them as helpful at all whatsoever. And those sorts of maps didn't really evolve until you got to the games like Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Super Metroid. The introduction of these maps, in my opinion, is sort of a compromise between the game designer and the player. Obviously, the game designer wants to encourage exploration, but they don't want the player constantly feeling like they're lost. And I think that being able to explore Metroid Prime more as I got older, I appreciated that map a lot more and kind of took the effort to get used to it. Now, I know that from other people's videos, I've seen that the Metroid Prime map is actually a pretty big topic of debate in terms of whether or not it's a good map, but after I sort of forced myself to get used to it and uh, got over the frustrations of having to turn it over over eight times because my, my brain could not comprehend this 3D map, I became really appreciative of it. Honestly, this type of map in any sort of exploration game is super useful to a player because it stops the annoying part of exploration, which comes when you're going back to previously explored areas and you have all that excitement for new things and old areas, 
but you can't find that darn door that you now have the weapon to open. And so in these sorts of games, I think a map is a fantastic idea. I think it encourages a player to explore without complete, completely losing that sense of adventure that the sort of blindly exploring maps, or rather lack thereof, give to the player. So Metroid Prime actually does this fantastically. It maintains that sense of adventure while still allowing the player a map to kind of go over those issues with exploration that come when you are revisiting previously explored areas to find new items and constantly backtracking and not really understanding where you're supposed to go. And the way that it does this is every time you go to a new area, so every time you go through a door that you haven't been through before, you will then map that new room to the map that you can access at any time and it will stay there no matter where else you go. Then, if you explore that zone enough, you'll eventually come to a room that allows you to reveal the entire map, and it shows all of the zones that you haven't explored yet. This gives you that sort of vibe of alone and scared and frightened that you would get in any sort of game when you're exploring a place that says you have no map here. And it also stops the players that are backtracking through those zones from getting frustrated at not remembering where that darn red door was. Which, I mean, honestly, it still happens when I'm looking through the map because it's such a huge area. And again, I'm not saying this map is perfect, but it is definitely a good example of giving the player enough direction and allowing them to map out the area themselves and eventually just saying, hey, here's the places you haven't explored yet, go check them out if you have the time. But honestly, I think one of the best balancing techniques that they use with this sort of mapping is that this map, this map uh, room that you will find in every single zone, except for I think the Talon Overworld, you will find pretty late on into the zone. And so you'll have explored most of it pretty blindly, and then you'll find this map room which will then show you all of the individual rooms that you've missed that you should go back to if you want to find more, um, well, power-ups or in some cases, just terrifying enemies that want to kill you with nothing behind them for some reason, until you come back later and use the super powerful bomb that uh, no one told you to use. Again, not perfect, but very good. I think one of the other games that does this fantastically, and what I think does it better than any other game out there, but this is for me personally, because I know a lot of people don't love this part of the game, is Hollow Knight. Now, Hollow Knight works on a map system that allows you to go into new zones whenever you want and whenever you can reach them, which I think is very interesting. It is also non-linear, so it allows you to kind of explore however you want, and I think that non-linearity stops you from going into new areas and being disappointed that you found a new area, because in a lot of other games when you find a new area, oftentimes you know that you haven't fully explored the previous area yet, and when that happens, you're going into this new area and you're like, oh well darn, I want to go back to the previous area and finish exploring that before I move on. And Hollow Knight stops this by encouraging you every time you find a new area to find the map as fast as possible. But as I said, it maintains those vibes of excitement and nerve-wrackingness that comes with exploring an unexplored and unmapped area. So you will go through this and it will be very tense because you don't really know what's going to happen next and you don't know if you're going to die or not, and if you die, you lose your progress and it's going to be tough to get back to where you were, which in Hollow Knight, like in Dark Souls, means you lose your souls, or in this case, you lose those little bug things. Can't remember the name, but you know what I'm talking about. And so the sense of exploration that it gives you by not just showing you exactly where you are in reference to where you were, and the vibe that that creates of isolation, which is one of the biggest things that people compliment Metroid Prime for, is totally worth the issues that it causes for some players where they feel like they don't know where they're going. Now, in general, that's kind of how you're supposed to feel during these parts, but once you reach those maps, you map out the entire area pretty vaguely, but enough, and then you go on these different sorts of explorations to the new areas within that one section, and as you go to new areas, you then have to find a bench to remap those areas in a very specific way. Now, I know I'm not doing a great job of, expl of explaining this, of exploring this, ha! Huh video title right there. But trust me when I say the tenseness and the excitement that it causes when you find a new area and you need to find the map to that area before you can get back to all those places and before you feel safe again, that sort of danger that the game creates is 
absolutely thrilling. Likewise, there's something important to mention here that this absolutely increases the difficulty of your game. If you don't have a map, or if you have a section of a game, um, or repeat sections that won't have maps for a player, it will absolutely increase the difficulty of the game because it will increase the danger for the player losing a significant amount of progress. If you have a map, at least a player as they're moving forward is always exploring new areas and always finding new areas and adding them to the map. But without a map, or temporarily without a map, what you're doing is every time that you go into a new area and don't find a map, that area will remain mysterious and will remain unknown for the most part, until you go back to it probably four or five times. Now, both the sides are good. When you do have a map that is created as you progress, it's exciting because then every new room that you find and every new door that you go through is progress in the game, and it does reward you in that sense. But at the same time, when you then die and have to go back to that area, or when you have to backtrack through an area that you've already explored that doesn't really have any new uh, doors or anything like that, it kind of tells you that you're finished with that area, and while there still may be some things there, having it on the map and having no obvious indicators on the map that there's anything else there is going to kind of dull that part of the map. And any of those previously explored areas to which there are no doors, it will, or rather to, from which there are no new doors, um, you will find yourself going back to them and just being like, okay, well, I'm just going to rush through this because I know exactly where to go. I know how to get through there and I'm not really worried about it. Whereas if you are going on the sort of Hollow Knight area where there isn't a map through this area, or at least temporarily there isn't, you have that tenseness and that mysteriousness of that area that is maintained every time you return to that area until you get a map. Now, I think that's fascinating, and that's one of the best things that I found about Hollow Knight, um, but I know it frustrates some people because, again, without that constant sense of progression, it, it does create a sense of danger, but at the same time, anytime you die, it feels like you haven't done anything. If you die in an area where you don't have a map and you go back to the last checkpoint, you will feel like nothing happened, especially in the case of, of something like Hollow Knight, because then you lose all of your money. At the same time, though, I, I want to counter that by mentioning that you have made progress in these circumstances, and although, I mean, I can't tell you how to feel, I personally find that in these circumstances, when I go back, I'm like, okay, well, I know that I need to go down, left, down, right in terms of the rooms to get back to where I was, or at least I think I do. And again, that's the sense of adventure and the sense of danger that I personally really enjoy with games like this. And that I think in general these days, people are starting to see and respect with games like Hollow Knight. Now, bringing this all together, what this causes for the player in terms of an actual gameplay mechanic is these sort of trips into the unknown. Anytime you have a map that is filling itself out as you go, you are sort of limiting the player from these trips because, again, you're maintaining that constant progress because anytime you go into a new room, it's mapped. Without a map, or with a map that is not...